Hello, welcome back. My name is Yenja and I am a memory champion, but you probably already knew that if you're subscribed, but if you're not, please subscribe and support the channel, but also get notified for free advice on memory and learning. Today we're going to be talking about how to memorize a speech quickly and easily. I frequently give speeches all around the world, well not right now, 45 to 60 minutes long and I usually only spend 5 to 10 minutes memorizing it and I think everybody can do it too. In fact, even while I've been away from this channel, I've been giving speeches and presentations via Zoom, but I've also been working on a memory course for you. So today, for a very limited time, you can buy this memory course that is an introduction to memory training champion techniques. But it's not just for how to become a champion, it's more about how to become a memory champion in your own day-to-day -day life, how to remember passwords, how to remember names and faces, as well as important anniversaries and birthdays days and special occasions, how to remember longer but also shorter numbers, and so much more. Snag that, it's in the link in the description to get my memory course. But back to what we want to talk about today, how to memorize a speech fast and easily. Well, we've all been there at some point in our lives where we need to memorize a speech. It might be for school or for work or because you're getting paid to do public speaking. Either way, it all comes down to a lot of memorizing or so it seems. Now, a lot of people will ask me how to memorize their speech word for word or verbatim. And I strongly suggest you do not do that because there is no one who is checking to see if you are learning it perfectly. And I would say it's much more interesting to see somebody who's giving a speech from their heart, so to speak. You still need to memorize something. And for that, I recommend that we start with memorizing the outline of the speech. Now, there's lots of ways you can do this. One example would be to use the memory pass technique that I talk about in my own videos but I've also talked about it on Netflix's Explained and recently I was on the HBO show How To with John Wilson and if you check those links in the description it's 22 minutes of how to use memory palaces except my own video is really really short on it but basically you can use the memory palace to remember the order but before you remember the order you need to write an outline and when you write the outline for your speech you want it to be as natural as possible and you want each part of your speech to flow in to the next part as naturally as possible for you because if you find the structure on the outline of your speech natural to remember it's going to be that much easier for most people to understand as well. Now when you make the outline you could use the memory palace technique or you could use the body technique which I teach in this course but I also could suggest that you use little points in the room. So you're basically using an in-person memory palace to kind of signal and trigger what you're supposed to say. So when you're creating the outline of your speech, you want to create it memory friendly. And by that I mean don't try to memorize long entire paragraphs, but memorize key points. So you start with the general by starting with the general structure of your speech and then move into the specific. So you want to move into the specific parts of your speech. Now as I've mentioned in many of my videos, Videos, the brain likes things in bite-sized chunks and not all in one go and in that way you want to split your speech up into five little chunks or eight little chunks or however many chunks feel natural to you so that you know okay now we've discussed this we've done the intro we're doing the meaty part now we're doing this part and now we're reaching the outro so that it has a natural flow to it and when you're making the outline I would suggest that you write it out because in general it seems like we are three times better at remembering what we've done by hand than when we are typing it out. So try to write it by hand, both the outline but also maybe the details or the bullet points that you want to hit in each of those chunks of your speech. Then I would practice sub-vocalizing. That means you don't have to practice a 45 minute speech 45 minutes at a time. You can practice sub-vocalizing and checking in on yourself by doing active recall, which is this concept of actively seeing whether you've actually remembered what you what it is you're trying to memorize. So you're sub-vocalizing and saying, oh, okay, I'm supposed to say this and then I'm supposed to say that. And so you're checking with yourself and you can have your handwritten notes 
out with you when you're practicing to see what it is that doesn't really gel well in your mind, what it is that you're missing. So you can reference back. And usually when you're doing active recall and you realize where there's a memory gap, the memory of having that gap is strong enough to make you not forget it the next time. So practice up vocalizing, read it out loud, but don't read it word for word. And nobody is going to check if it is word for word. So if it is a little bit different or the vibe in the room is a little bit different when you're about to give your school or work or public speaking address, don't freak out. Just go with the flow. It's not going to come out exactly the same way every time. As long as you have the general concepts and the ideas in there, it's going to be an interesting speech. If it's something low stakes, don't feel afraid to rely and lean on your slides or your presentation because it, nobody is expecting you to be a perfect public speaker if it's not that you've been hired to do a perfect public speech. You can just rely on it and then you can look at the slides and nobody's gonna fret too much. If it's in school, usually people are more nervous about what they're gonna say when it's their turn to present and the teacher is probably maybe not even there actively listening. So don't be afraid to rely on these visual cues. I would also say that it is helpful to have a presentation and a slide prepared because then it engages more senses than just listening to you speak. Because when you're attacking the viewer or the audience with both visual and auditory cues, it is going to be that much easier for them to learn whatever it is that you're presenting. Now, this is really important. The first and the last sentence, the first and the very last part of your speech are the most important things to really get right. Why is that? Because our brains have this thing called a recency bias. So we tend to remember what happened recently as being stronger or more effective than what happened earlier. But we we also have this tendency to be very impacted by first impressions. So if the first impression you give off in your speech is that you don't know what you're about to say, then it kind of lingers and bleeds into the rest of the speech, even if you give the rest of the speech in a fantastic way. So you want to start strong, but you want to finish even stronger. So much of it is body language. So much of it is your gaze. So much of communication in general is body language. And if you feel comfortable and you have practiced and rehearsed your speech enough, or you feel that you know the topic well enough, you shouldn't be too nervous. And if you're being hired to give a speech on something that you feel like you're not 100% sure of, you should question whether you should be giving that speech at all. The reason I can memorize my entire speech in five minutes is because I give vaguely the same speech uh, or there are three main speeches that I give and then I customize it depending on the audience, depending on the language barrier, depending on if it's online or in person, etc. And I know the topic well enough that if anyone in the audience asks me something very specific, I know what to say. If I need, if there is a technical glitch, like one time <laughs> the PowerPoint presentation didn't work at all and I had to give a 45 minute speech just from memory, and I could do that because I know enough about memory and I know enough about the structure of my speech and I know enough about when I'm losing the audience, when I'm getting the audience back, which is why this is a little bit harder because I can't tell. I can only see statistics on when you guys stop watching, but it's way easier in person because you can kind of feel what's happening in the room. So I would say also read the room. That's a bonus tip for giving speeches in general and play with memory as well in your speech. Try to make stories, try to make it visual, try to make it engaging because what we're engaged with, it's way easier to remember than what we're just passively consuming and what's passively being thrown at us. So let me know in the comments down below what stood out to you, what you've learned from this video, and let me know if you actually do want to learn how to memorize things word for word verbatim because that's something I've been doing a lot in my acting classes. I had to memorize an entire Shakespeare monologue in just an afternoon because I was working and doing this 30 to 40 hour Shakespeare course at the same time. So I have a lot of experience with learning things word for word where not a single syllable can be out of place without the teachers noticing. So let me know what you're interested in. And if you're like, what acting classes? I thought you were just a memory champion. Then you obviously don't follow me on Instagram because that's where I'm talking about what's going on in my life as well as giving little Instagram story news and tips about memory as well.
And that's where I take you behind the scenes on set and inform you about all the memory projects I've been up to, including the memory course. So buy the memory course for $10 for 60 day access. And then if you need more time, you can extend that to lifetime access for 10 additional dollars. But after this limited time, it'll be $100 for all, even if you come through my YouTube channel. So I hope you like this video and I hope you're subscribed and I hope you have a very memorable rest of your day. Bye.